Ladies and gentlemen, rockers from all around the world. Yes, all around the world. We might be here in little old blighty, but our viewers are all around the world. Welcome to Musical People in Journeys. That's a mouthful, but we love it. The Rock Show. And today, yay. And I'm joined here by my wonderful panel um, for the, the, the first of a double act for this weekend, which is May the Force or May the Rock be with you. Um, and and it's all about um, um, reviewing all the latest uh, album releases from the wonderful month of April. So welcome to the show, Simon. Ooh, hello. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Simon. Good morning, Dave. Hello. Good to be here as always. Yeah, good. And good morning, Paul or Pablo. Oh. For some reason, you need to change that name, Paul. You're not Pablo. <laughs> I am Pablo. My name is Pablo Montoya. Yeah, you killed you the kill, rock. You, yeah, you killed my father. Prepare to die. Okay, so today's um, um, rock festival um, is the first part of um, our review of of fifteen acts. Fifteen acts, um, and there's eight on each stage. Why? But, but, what? But eighteen, eight plus eight makes sixteen. Aha, uh -huh. no. We had our first approach from a band who would want us, who submitted submitted their album for review, um, and that was Bone Driver. So what I thought I'd do is to uh, put it on both stages, because I often wonder, well, if this person was on that, that stage and reviewing that stage, I think this band might have scored higher. Um, so I thought, well, we put, um, we put our first act on both stages and compare and see how both panels thought of our first ever submission um that we got approached at and if you haven't watched the show what's the format format's very simple um we review all the latest albums and um we rate them um out of five um and just for justification this is our own personal ratings this is how much we enjoyed the albums and it varies because not all the time do we always agree and it becomes sometimes a little bit interesting in our debates of those ones and shocking because i might think oh my god this album is amazing simon's gonna love it and simon hates it so um <clears throat> so so it's, a, it's our personal rating now we have a hall of fame and only and i think we've reviewed about 70 albums now and only six have ever got the sacred rating of a four plus which basically means it hits everybody's sweet spot in some shape or fashion which means it must be a good album so will any of today's acts get into our hall of fame well who is on the festival of course you've got to know what's coming you've got to you know you've got a festival you've got to know what the act is so the first act we're going to have is a, a band called bone driver um and they're they are they're opening the the festival with valley of the bones and then we have new horizon with gates of the gods black swan with generation mind uh, lords of the trident and the offering a treat with endgame a reef with shoot me your ace Oh, the old rockers Nazareth are making a comeback uh, with Surviving the Law and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, Red Hot Chili Peppers with Ultimate Love. So, what would hit our sweet spot? Let's get right into it. So, the first act that was up was Bone Driver with Valley of the Bones. Now, I was on a forum and I was posting about the um, the, 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 um, the review show that we do. And uh, Metal Mark, I think his name was, reached out and said, would you review our new release, uh, which was coming out in April? So I said, yeah, sure, why not? So um, so thank you, Bone Driver, for that. Um, it was really interesting to see a new band um, with a new album and to see what we thought of it. So, Paul, you 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 you, you researcher of, of heavens, rock heavens, um, who are Bone Driver, Paul? Who are Bone Driver, and what did you think of their, their, their Valley of the Bones? Okay, uh, well, Born Driver were formed in uh, 2017 and, and are hailing from uh, North Carolina. And they're a heavy metal band who received uh, favorable reviews on the release of the uh, 2019 debut album, Ain't Too Pretty, Ain't Too Proud. Having gone through the pandemic and having, a f having to find a new drummer over the period, uh, they've launched a new album, Valley of Bones. For me, a bone driver music feels like a cross between ZZ Top and Motorhead. And if you're wondering if such a combination can be pulled off, then listen to this album. Uh, 
as an opening act to a festival, they're a great band to get the crowd going and we'll probably pick up a few fans along the way. They even throw in a few ballads uh, to boot with the uh, seasons change and coming home tracks. All I, all I can say is that I enjoyed and will be very interested in what they come up with in the future. Cool. Um, Dave, what did you think of uh, Bone Driver? I'm going to presume you'd never heard of them. Shock me, the same. <laughs> well, Nigel, fancy that. I've been following them for the last three years. Uh, I really enjoyed this album. It's definitely... Um my sort of thing um heavy dose of hard rock clear country and western influence in there as well um musically strong throughout uh, rock and roll rodeo um living it up uh, particular fa- particular favorites very good solos in some of those um good lyrically if a little tongue-in-cheek at times um can't really find a great deal to criticize with it uh, sometimes you can hear that it does possibly lack the polish of like a big label production but you know there's a lot of albums like that and in all fairness i quite like that it adds a little bit of character to it um definitely will go back to this for sure um i saw some of their uh, facebook footage of them actually doing sort of recording for the album and uh, it's worth checking out if you guys haven't seen it simon bone driver did it did it did it drive deep into your musical bones simon uh yeah i mean i'd say it did uh i mean good old school like American hard rock, um, and he did rock pretty hard. It was it was good. It was a really fun album. Um, it felt sort of like really good sort of like party tracks. It's really good for keeping like an atmosphere up or something. It's quite electric and exciting. I thought. Um, I my personal taste is I usually lean heavy towards the heavier side, more sort of five finger death punch that sort of stuff for American rock. But the album was really good. Uh, there was some good tempo change stuff in there. Seasons change and far too gone were really nice as well. And we have to give special mention and credit to Cock in a Hen House, which is both do hilarious we? and great song. Do we? Do yeah, we have we do. to give special mention to Cock we in the do. Hen House? We do. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, to, um, the only critical things, some of the compositions do feel a bit strange on repeat listening in some of the songs. I think in the Shotgun Road, it seems a little bit off, but that's sort of getting a bit nitpicky on it overall the album was really good I actually really enjoyed it, I was quite surprised by it wow, okay could Bone Driver be heading for our Hall of Fame at their first ooh, that would be exciting uh, what a nice thing about Valley Bones I, I enjoyed it, um, but there were some annoying things about it <laughs> if I'm honest, I actually disagree with you I, I love, I, when it gets my um, in terms of Cock in a Hen House I like my innuendo to be a little bit more subtle um, than hey, there's a cock in the hen house and actually that just actually annoyed me a little bit, which is unusual for me because I do like innuendo, um, but for some reason didn't kind of get there as well I think I think um, it's interesting because when I re-listened to the album, the first album Paul I would agree, just cross between kind of Motorhead and that sort of genre, and then the next song was a bit Brian Adamsy, which goes along with Dave's kind of version of a bit of country western uh, influence in there, and it was just like so it was a little bit, uh, and I like but that, that's not a major criticism but I think you need to do things really really well, and the vocal change there was some great vocal change, the vocal range of the lead singer was, was actually really really good um, but there was also some other things that I like I um, what I call repeat echo vocals probably totally wrong in terms of its uh, <laughs> its way of doing that, but Valley of the Bones Valley of the Bones, Valley of the Bones, Valley of the Bones, and it was just like it's a bit. It was a bit old school for me. Um, I, you know, um, I, I love my dad, dad, dad rock, but I like more modern dad rock. So in other words, you know, people have taken dad rock and 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 really put a modern kind of feel to it. So it, so there was some annoying kind of things. You're absolutely right. Some of the production sometimes felt a little bit amateurish, but again, that's kind of nitpicking. But overall, the drive and energy of the album was was um, was, was was terrific. And some of the ballads were, were and I like a rock ballad was was pretty darn good as well. So um, so yeah. So not I, I I enjoyed the album. I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. So um, from that perspective. So let's go and find out then um, what uh, what we all thought of uh, of Valley of the Bones, Paul. This year, you're five. Well, I didn't. I didn't. Well, you're 3. out of five. That's uh, three point five. Three point five. Okay, uh, Simon. Oh, uh, I give it a four out of five. Four. Ooh, okay, Dave. Uh, three point five out of five to me as well. Three point five. Okay, I give it a three. Um, so, uh, oh, what we got there then? Um, 
I'm 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 missing a vote there. Am I a Dave, Paul, Simon, Knowledge? Um yeah, um there should be five of us and I've only got four. Paul three point five, Simon Yeah, it's because Chris isn't here. Yeah, where's Chris? So, uh, we just discovered that one of our rock crew, Chris, unfortunately he did contact me that um, he's um, he's had some technical issues and, and is not able to join us. So, where I was looking non-plus at a non, the missing fifth column of a vote, um, we will uh, we will get uh, Chris's ratings in there. But, I mean, that looks like an average of something like three and a half. That's going to put Bone Driver pretty high up. Anyway, so moving on um, with our next uh, next band, uh, his new horizon um, with uh, Gates of the God. I am going to go. I'm going to start here with Simon because I would think I would think that this might be more Simon's kind of cup of tea because very much. Uh, what did you think? I'm not going to spoil it. Simon, who are they? What did you think? Oh well, you'd be thinking right. <laughs> yeah, this sort of rumbling power metal is it's my favourite genre, and I think this is a great this is a great entry into it. Uh, we unite is a, just a fantastic opening, uh, and I felt like the pace just didn't let up for the album, which I love. Um, th- the drumming in particular throughout the album was just fantastic. I was just air drumming all the way with it. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the the vocal style on it, but that. It's just purely down to personal taste. I don't find anything wrong with it. It's just not not a particular bag every single time. Um, but it is he is fantastic at singing. He, it's just there's a few too many sort of you know big woeful cries in there. Um, Cry for freedom, Gate of the Gods. Some of my fan, favorite tracks on there. Absolutely love them. They've made their way onto my playlists. Um, yeah, I, fantastic album. Absolutely loved it. Dave. Uh, yeah, this unfortunately just not my taste at all um as soon as the vocalist lets out the scream at the start of we unite i was like yeah i think this is going to be a tough listen for me um in fact i was never actually managed able to get through the whole thing in one go i had to sort of listen to it in bits and pieces um in fact i think the first time i listened to it i turned it off away halfway through and it was just like i'll do shut up already um i mean they're all very accomplished musicians it's um they're really good at what they do um but it's all very one-dimensional all, all very samey and it gets to a point where it's like yes guys we get it you can play fast um but to be fair i know i'm not the intended audience for this um if you're into this sort of thing like simon i'm sure you'll really enjoy it but it, yeah it's just not my sort of thing at all you see what i said at the beginning you would think one people's gonna love it and the next come is smash you in the face uh paul um was this your 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 genre your cup of tea did did new horizons bring a new horizon for you well new horizon a, a new metal power band made of made up of uh eric uh gronwall the former vocalist from heat and uh jonah t also from heat who plays uh, the bass, the guitars, the keyboard, and backing vocals. Now, Heat are uh, a melodic hard rock group, so one has to believe this duo moved on to their preferred genre in music. The problem for me was that, that it felt as if they turned the drum machine to full tempo and left it there for the duration of the album. Even the guest appearances from musicians such as bands as Dragon Force, uh, Dynasty, and Temple Balls, it all seemed soulless, machine-driven. There's no doubt that these two are talented and that Eric has a fantastic voice, but the album did nothing for me. And after listening to Sabaton and Battle Beast, Beast offerings this year, New Horizon uh, is looking far off into a distant galaxy from what is happening on the power metal scene this year. Well, all I can say is give me soulless music any time of the year because that this album i'm with simon filled my soul up i'll take i'll take that drum beat at that million miles an hour all day long and and i disagree i think the tempo i think they did change the tempo quite well for me um yeah, call of the underground one of my probably you know, one top tracks of the year by um I, I just love that tune i love the phrasing of it i love the musicality of them i think this was an absolute terrific album terrific not perfect by any stretch of the imagination could have done a bit more variation but i, I put it up there with battle beast any day any time of the day 
any time. I found I thought it just had much more variation and much more uh, uh, different types of tempos in it than say Battle Beast, um, which you know they were, they were they were good, but I would I would definitely I, I definitely preferred it. I, I prefer I I think I think the, the the it's almost it wasn't quite a concept album, um, but it felt like that, and and I thought lyrically it was fantastic, musically thought it was fantastic, great album. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely, absolutely terrific. Um, didn't hit my sweet spot all the way through, but loved it. And I think Call of the Underground probably one of my tracks of the year um, by by a long way. So, um, so yeah. So Simon, um, I think um, yeah. Th this is what I'm saying. If we had say Will on this album, but he probably would have given it a five. Let's kind of go through. Simon, give us give us your give us your rating. Yeah, four out of five for me. Four out of five for you and Dave. Yeah, I'm not, as I say, not a power metal sort of guy, so um, this could have been the greatest album ever and it still wouldn't have got a great uh, score from me, so uh, one out of five. <sighs> Sack on blurb, Sack on blurb, Paul. Yeah, I just, I'm reeling from that myself, really, but... Uh, a one! <laughs> Go back to your room, David, and come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I said, um, it, for me it was an average album, two and a half. Oh! that's shocking that is shocking um simon i'm with you a four a four for me as well so um well you're looking at probably about an average of three there so let's see what chris will come up with um but they say not bad right not bad not bad some of us like it some of us don't so um so we're swiftly moving on let's take flight with a swan let's take flight with a black swan and let's find out where Black Swan will take us in Generation of the Mind. Dave, your turn. Let's start with you. Black Swan, have you heard of them? Um, no, I haven't. Um, so, um, just just thought I'd start with. Uh, so, are we re re reviewing uh, latest releases? Because um, this is clearly an 80s album, surely. <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest, though, that being said, um, I don't mind at all because this has definitely, definitely hit my sweet spot. Um, Consistently strong throughout, some great melodies, um, lots of tracks on there that I ended up found myself humming to myself. Um, Air Guitar was out in full force. Miracle um, is an amazing track, really loved it. Proper, proper good guitar solo in that. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with the last track though. It seems to sort of fade out at the end and then comes back in for about four or five seconds. It was just pretty random. It was really interesting choice as to why they do that. Um, but definitely see myself going back to this. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Ooh, Paul, what about um, what about you? Um, what did Generation of the Mind do for you? Well, uh, Black Swan is regarded as something of a supergroup in the rock world, uh, with singer Robin uh, McGorkley, uh, formerly of McGorkley uh, Schenkner Group, uh, Jeff Pilson and Red Beach for uh, the former bassist and guitarist of Dokken, and also... Um, uh, rep has also played with White Snake as well. Uh, also, the drummer as well, Matt Starr, uh, hails from Ace Freely, uh, former guitarist of Kiss, and Mr. Big. These guys have been around uh, for a while uh, with uh, the singer McGorkley pushing on 70. They're no spring chickens. Formed in 2020, the Generation Mine is the second hard melodic rock offering. It is more polished uh, affair than their first album. Black Swan, I've hatched, I'm getting in on the act as well, right? Uh, a great little rock uh, album. I think it could have offered a bit more uh, creativity and variety, but it is a, a good rock, uh, uh, hard rock uh, experience uh, with a little nod to uh, AOR uh, here and there. If I hadn't listened to the Scorpions' uh, new album uh, the other month, this album might have scored even higher. Simon, it wasn't power metal. It was, it, and, and we know what you kind of think about um, about um, uh, dad's dad's rock. Call it was this was more was this more da dad rock for you, or did this uh, this hit your sweet spot at all? Well, a bit of dad rock, a bit of hard rock is always welcome, but I don't think I'd remember to invite Black Swan back. I'm afraid. <gasps> um, <laughs> The songs were good, don't get me wrong, the songs were good. I never felt the, like a itching need to skip any tracks or like come back to the album later or anything, which I do usually when they're bad. But uh, apart from the first intro track, which was a minute long intro of nothingness, but 
um apart from that the songs are quite good um this probably is someone who this probably is an album that someone who's really into hair metal like you know motley Crue, Def leopard and that sort of influence would probably really really enjoy but to me it just sort of blurs into the background of that sort of genre and noise unfortunately and it is as you say it's just uh it's not my sort of cup of tea unfortunately so it was all right but just nothing special for me so uh, trading blows with Dave. Dave, <laughs> um, I love, I hate, love, I hate. Um, I, 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 as you know, I'm a fan of this sort of uh, genre of music, and I thought this was an absolute terrific album. Absolutely terrific. And it's really funny, actually, Dave, because you said about the last, uh, the last track was actually my favourite track. I will follow you. It's um, not a bad track. It just oh, sort of, it's weird. It fades out at the oh, end and then comes back know, about ten I love seconds. It. And... Oh. God, I love it. I love that track. I I will follow you. I think I'll, I'll play that track. I'll put it onto my cool playlist songs. I just adore that track because uh, I do like a good rock ballad. But all the way through, it's it's kind of funny. I see Paul with Ace Freely and so those that's it. Influence. I thought this was a new kind of band coming through. So the fact that they've uh, pulled legends of uh, different rock bands together uh, to boost um, and and it is a really well produced album as well. Actually hit my sweet spot. Liked it. Um. And yet, for me, a lot. Of, it was a bit samey. I've got to say, um, kind of right through the album. So it wasn't an album that I. I think I've, I've downloaded it and it's on my playlist. But um, there wasn't enough real. Apart from I will follow, there wasn't enough other real standout tracks for me that kind of just I would would make it want to keep going back again and again and again. But I thoroughly enjoyed the album. I thought it was absolutely terrific. It was a very, 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 very good album very very enjoyable so okay so let's see where where the flight of black swan took us um so um uh, uh, dave yeah i guess you can uh label me a fan of hair metal then i guess because I, I gave this a four out of five four out of five four out of five paul two pairs four out of five yeah simon well let's tank that average two out of five <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let's tank you back up with another four. Three fours! Three fours, everybody. Three fours. That puts it on. That puts it on 16 at the minute. 18. 18 at the minute. If Chris, if Chris is vote, pull that in. Yeah, it's four plus four plus four is 16, plus two is 18, Dave, before you start looking. No, it's, uh, I think you'll find it's um, 14. Oh, 14, you're right. It's not 16. <laughs> so, uh, we'll edit that bit out. No, we won't. Um, <laughs> so, you're right, 14. Uh, so, it's not going to get in the Hall of Fame, no matter what. Well, it, it might do, depending on what Chris gives it. You'd have to give it a six. Aver- well, no, if he gave it a two, it would still be an average of four. No, it wouldn't. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Touché! Yeah. Back at you! <laughs> we need a maths teacher on this, uh, yeah, this programme um, for sure. Because there's only four of us, I'm sort of going, four, yeah, I, know, yeah, I know, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it's still going to get, I think it's going to get uh, into our, possibly uh, into our top 20. Okay, next. <clears throat> Lords of the Trident and the Offering. <sighs> more sweet spot stuff i feel for simon potentially coming up so we have to start with simon because i think this this is our resident kind of power metal kind of concept sort of album guru so simon talk to me about uh, lords of the trident and the offering yeah i mean i mean more power metal i'm in heaven um <laughs> i right off the bat i love this album um the songs i feel like uh, they have a powerful aura to them without being overbearing there's really strong vocals throughout that sort of threads with these amazing shredding solos um it is a bit of a concept album um but the track acolyte in particular i really felt hit hard um and that's made it way it went straight onto my personal playlist because i love that track um, and I, I will admit I am a bit of a sucker for um, an album that has a story so I love it when songs are intertwined with each other and there's sort of like a, a, a thread going throughout them so yeah I, this this is exactly the kind of stuff I love so yeah I no holds barred it's, uh, I love this album it's fantastic Paul tell us a little bit more before we hear um, the, the, the the dagger of Dave's anti bane of a power metal. Um, um, uh, talk to me about uh, Lords of the Trident. Wait, who are they, Paul? So let, let us reveal all, my friend. Uh, well, 
Okay. <laughs> okay, forged in the depths of uh, Wisconsin in, uh, I can't even pronounce it this time in the morning, uh, in 2005, Lords of the Trident are an American heavy metal power band. Others would hint that they are progressive metal driven, renowned for their show performance wearing armor and costumes, where you could even call it, even call it uh, go as far as calling it LARPing. Uh, the, mu the lyrics are firmly based in the fantasy realm and Lords of the Trident invite you into their fantasy world. The Offering album was self-released uh, and it, they, they've done it in a very complicated way. Self-released uh, to Patreon backers in uh, January 26th uh, during the, uh, a live stream and it was unannounced and withheld the release of the album to the public until the 1st of April this year. They've also uh, announced that they've uh, they've created eight uh, music videos for the album, as well as a full album video, which consists of 12 uh, lyric videos ba with back-to-back -back narration in between. They've even gone on tour, but you won't be able to see it unless you've backed it on Patreon as well. So, yeah, the offering is fun. It's a plan, isn't it? Listen, any album that starts off with a harp solo, before launching into a, a, a power metal a ruckus has to be fun, right? The problem is, is the length of, of the album. At over an hour long, it's just far too long. The first two songs take uh, just over t 10 minutes, but it felt like 20 minutes to me. Uh, there's nothing out of the ordinary that gets the blood pumping. I don't even remember any of the choruses. It's good music, solid metal but there's nothing that excites and it is something I would have in the background, but that is hardly what Lords of the, the Trident represent. Dave. Um, yeah, again, I mean, as I said, power metal, not really my taste. However, I enjoyed this a hell of a lot more than I did the, uh, the new horizons album. Um, they at least changed it up a bit. Uh, throughout it, it wasn't it didn't feel like you know i agree with paul on the last one it felt the other one felt like it was one pace this definitely didn't feel like that um it's got a very theatrical feel to it and it feels like they could be entertaining live with the right sort of stage show to complement the music um again can't complain about the level of ability on show clearly very talented definitely enjoyed the way they implemented um more classical elements in there in certain songs so yeah i really enjoy, um, enjoyed this compared to the other one um, I adore this album. I absolutely adore it, and I enjoyed it more. And I, and I get what Paul's kind of saying because I I listened to the album on Amazon Music and I thought it's really interesting. But when you and it, and and this is this isn't a a oh it's kind of a story going through. It has a full story going through. This is an out and out and out concept album, okay, of a story. And 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 when you and it's really hard to get it. It lets you do some background research about what actually the story, so you can see and feel the thread. It takes it would take a lot of listens for you to interpret what that story kind of is. Um, and so I went to YouTube, and on the YouTube uh, there is a, the full albums on YouTube with the narration, and the narrator is fantastic. He sat in front of a long fire. There's a fire behind him. He's got an axe in front of him, and he explains the story. And the story is very much of um, of a, a race of being called the guardians and the guardians are uh, are the, the the protectors and in each guardian will protect a part of the land or a major city or province or whatever and they would they would judge people so that there's always a balance between good and evil um, and that and and but their training is incredibly harsh many acolytes as they called um, will die you know, they take them as children will die and won't make it to become a guardian so it's all that initial story is all about his trials of becoming a guardian and the acolyte is one of them and then he goes on and, and then he becomes you know a protector of a province and then of a really powerful you know a guardian of a very powerful city and and yet um, he's kind of young he's one of the youngest guardians ever got there and, and slowly but surely he's not so much corrupted but his view of the world is 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 um, 
it changed by the the money people and 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 things like the offering and stuff and the, the sacrifices to to kind of the gods and everything and eventually his master you know, comes to confront him and he kills his master and that moment he realizes what he's done and and then and then obviously the, 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 about about his attempt at sort of redemption um, and once you understand that story the lyrics become even more powerful more powerful and the musicality of those lyrics becomes even more powerful and for me um you know things like um um the um offering to the void was just oh, it was fantastic and the blade is all about um, is all about uh, you know his battle with the master he's, he's a person who trained him and and tries to go oh, what the hell are you doing for god's sake this is not what you were trained to do phenomenally brilliant album brilliant concept album but the problem is with concept albums is that you have to understand the concept and and i kind of get why they've done it with the patrons and stuff because you'd really kind of appreciate um you'd really appreciate it more if you fully understand the whole of that concept albums you know and 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 so this is an out and out power metal concept album and next to camelot and and, and simon will, will introduce me to a band called camelot um and you know, I think this, in a sense, I thought Camelot was even bigger, grandiosa uh, version with the story of Mephistopheles and the fallen angel and that sort of stuff. And it was harder even to grasp, you to grasp that concept at a fully, you know, because it was based on the uh, on the Faust. Um, um, classic novels i thought i felt well, actually when you when you listened a bit more to the narration and that you, you you could grasp this concept a lot easier um and it was a lot better so i actually enjoyed this album terrifically i really did i thought it was absolutely superb a superb power metal and, and you're right lots of lots of lots of things like harps and variations of the music musically i thought it was absolutely terrific so really 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 hit my sweet spot absolutely adored this album i thought it was terrific so um so simon uh, let's show your ratings uh, i'm sure this will come as a great shock but five out of five five out of five fantastic cool stuff uh paul well sorry i i, I thought i, I just I had a surreal moment that I'd, I'd actually gone to, on to a, a fantasy book pod, uh, podcast then. Oh. Um, there, yeah, is, there, uh, is, there is a crossover, you have to say. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I give it a three. A three, okay. Uh, Dave? Um, I gave it a two and a half out of five, which for a power uh, metal album for me is, is probably just about as good as a five. Yeah, um... Uh, the, my problem here is is that I give Sabaton a five, okay, and was it as good as Sabaton? And, and I've got to say, it probably it probably wasn't quite as good as the Sabaton um, album. So it's going to take a lot for me to give the Golden Ticket five for a power metal band. But this was damn close, so I'm giving it a four and a half, and I loved it. Um, okay, so nine and a half, ten, twelve, fifteen, fifteen. Will Will Chris give it a five? I doubt Not it. Not likely. I doubt it. But <laughs> uh, but you never know. You never know. And so we'll uh, we'll, we'll 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 have to tune in to find out um, um, what, what it is. But it's gonna it's gonna definitely get into our top twenty. Um, I think of the year at least. Maybe not of all time, but certainly gonna get in there. All right. So. <sighs> Let's take a breath of that fantasy novel review. Um, so we're moving on to treat and end game. And so, Paul, why didn't you? Um, why didn't you? Why didn't you kick us off? Did we have or did treat give you a powerful rock treat? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, treat treated a, a melodic uh, rock band hailing from Stockholm, Sweden. They launched their first album in 1985 and wrote the tales of bands such as Europe and Bon Jovi. They continued with the following up until the band broke up in 1993. After a 13-year retreat, uh, <laughs> they returned after signing up with Frontier Music and uh, released an album four years later in 2010. And that kick-started the second era of Treat. It has been four years since the last album, uh, Tangasha, and Endgame, the ninth studio album, is a 12-track effort that, define, that definitely underlines the band's roots in the 1980s. If you're into melodic rock, then this is a fine album up to a point. 
I feel the second half of the album loses energy and is not as strong as the first four tracks on the album. If I'd not lived through the 80s and was introduced to the, the genre, I would be impressed. However, I enjoyed, I would recommend, but there's better out there. Dave, what, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you have a treat, my friend? Um, well, it is a very enjoyable album, but it's definitely a little unmemorable. Um, it was one of those that when I was uh, writing all my notes down, I actually sat there and I looked at it at first and went, I'm not sure I listened to this one. And then as soon as I played it, I went, oh, yeah, no, yeah, I did. And it was like I, I, I couldn't actually remember any of the album without going back and listening to it again. Um, the songwriting is decent quality throughout, um, but there's just no real bangers. It's like we um, said last month with a couple of albums on there. There's just no sort of standout tracks. It's all okay, but nothing sort of excellent. Um, Wake Me Up When It's Over is probably my favourite track on there. Catchy little chorus, but again, you know, it's just okay. Um, it feels like they've played it very safe. It feels like they know their style and they just sort of stuck to that, stayed in their comfort zone and sort of not dared venture out. Um, I'd happily listen to it again, but I'm, I'm sure there is better out there and they've done better themselves, so... Simon. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably in some of an agreement. It's like uh, I do really enjoy melodic rock. Um, the album was enjoyable. Um, I did have a good time listening through it. But as you say, there's nothing, nothing overly that memorable about it, apart from maybe um, "Home of the Brave" for me, because it was a bit of a chest pump, you know, chest thumping song. But um, the, you know, there was some. There's a nice mixture of songs on there. You've got like some power ballads. You've got some softer melodies. Um, particularly the ending song to the end of love. Um, which I kind of enjoyed. Uh, it, it just it felt like a very sort of um, it's a very classic song. Um, so yeah, it was it was an enjoyable album, but just nothing nothing overly special or memorable for it for me, unfortunately. You're a bunch of soulless gits, aren't you? God's sake! <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, music is music is there to be enjoyed. I thought this was terrific. I generally thought this was a really super cool album. Very melodic, very cool, very I I very I think I think I agree with you to a point. It was very easy listening. Um, you know, there wasn't like oh my god, I I enjoyed Freudian. The first first three or four tracks, um, Rabbit Hole in particular, I thought was really good. I I, I think you're right in a way. It does. It does. The album kind of does meander a little bit. It doesn't really have enough possible gears to it. It's very melodic rock, pretty much way through it. And I think that the certainly the first half of the album kind of grabbed me and kept me. And the rest of the album was was quite enjoyable, you know, without being like, oh wow, do you know what I mean? Like wow, 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 type of thing. But um, but a terrifically good album. Really well produced. Very melodic. Very easy listening. Um, uh, you, you know. Nothing, um, and, and, and a really good album without it being too explicit as well. A lot of albums, I, and I, I quite like explicitity on, on times. That's a new word of the day, isn't it? Explicitity. Um, but it just, um, you know, it didn't kind of get, get into it. I, I really liked this album. I thought it was absolutely, it was an, it was an enjoyable listen um, for, for sure. So, um, but um, yeah, it's good. It's a good album. Well, I thought they did terrifically well. So um, I think this, I think this will do. This will do really well. So, so let's find out. Poor treat. Yeah, just about average, or just over average for me. Uh, three. A three. Okay, um, Dave. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'm at set three out of five. Three out of five. Simon. Yeah, keep the trend going. Three out of five. Three out of five. You are a soulless lot. I, I, I maybe I'm being generous today. Maybe maybe I'm being generous today. Um, it's another four for me. I thoroughly enjoyed this album. I thought it was really good. So um, there we go. Okay, well, that's on 16. <gasps> no, it's not. It's on 13. Just, I, just, I just thought I'd check you there. Just thought I knew it was 13, everybody. So anyway, right. <laughs> um, swiftly moving on. Let me shoot you an ace here, Simon, with Reef. Talk to me, Simon. Talk to me about Reef and talk to me about shoot me an ace uh, Reef which um, I thought I'd heard of them before and I've heard their one track before uh, <laughs> so no this was it was a good uh, uh, it was a really fun album um, it felt like it was really upbeat really kept sort of my spirits high throughout as I listened to it um, obviously as I said I can't speak for their back catalogue and what it's like because I genuinely only know that one song um, 
but I really actually enjoyed the this album. I really enjoyed the direction it went. Um, I almost felt like this was um, a really good way to be introduced to the band. Um, the lead singer, Gary Stringer, I think, um, has an absolute cracking voice. It's so distinct and unique in the way he sings, and it really sort of. I think that actually, for me, that's what elevates the songs. The actual sort of the musical stuff, um, the sure. in, the the instrument stuff is okay, but. Um, I really enjoy his vocals and his singing. So, yeah, it's a fun album. Quite enjoyed it. Cool. Um, Dave, talk to you about Reef. Yeah, for me, this one's uh, as about as middle of the road as it comes. Um, for every standout track on there, there just seems to be another that's just filler, basically. Um, best tracks on the album, probably the title track and uh, Best of Me. Um, but again, another case of a band that I feel just played it safe. They know their. You know they know their style and you know they're not going to venture away from it they're not going to try anything new i mean at this point i guess if they've been around you know as long as they have why bother they've got their fan base so you know they, they can afford to play it safe um it's definitely worth a listen though but i'm unlikely to go back to it i'm you know i'm without a doubt they've done better albums than this Paul, had you heard had, had you heard of reef before is that is this something that crossed your 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 musical journey yeah, I feel that the, the one hit, as Simon uh, put it. Um, so Reef are a Somerset outfit uh, which appeared on the scene in the mid-1990s with their early 70s blue rock sound. Some would say they they now sound like a cross between Guns N' Roses and a 1960s West Coast hair metal band. Shoot Me, in your a- Shoot Me Your Ace, which is a great title, by the way, uh, is their sixth studio album in nearly 30 years. It was produced by Andy Taylor, once of Dur- Duran Duran fame, and he also plays uh, guitar lead with Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Wood's son, Jesse. So the pedigree is here for a successful band. The fact that Taylor has now become a member uh, tells you something about the, the, the chemistry they have. I did follow Taylor's solo uh, power station career for a while as he left Duran Duran because he wanted to move the band into a more rock oriented agenda, which was ironic as this, as they started to uh, quickly go downhill after his departure and even looked to replace him with Gary Moore. He didn't join them and they never recovered from their decline. Back to Reef. The music is old school with uh, either a tribute to past bands or heavily influenced by them. There is one problem, though, and that is the singer Gary Stringer. He's Marmite. You'll either uh, love him or hate him. For me, getting past the sex grunts was the first issue. The The fact that he sounds uh, like so many other singers at first is off-putting. But as soon as you appreciate the tongue-in-cheek attitude and his sheer uh, vocal range, it becomes a bonus. Taylor and Wood's guitar and things are enough to keep you engaged. And overall, this is a very solid rock album offering. Um, it's more than solid. It's fantastic. I mean, it is. I mean, you, I mentioned about Bone Driver and Induendo, and uh, I like it a bit more subtle, and Stranger delivers that subtlety for me, without, but, but at the same time being pretty obvious, it is very, very tongue-in-cheek in kind of whatever. And, and uh, for me, Best of Me, right on, hit my playlist straight away absolutely loved it terrific album it hit my sweet spot this is very much my kind of um, that kind of bluesy kind of rock kind of mixture really kind of seems to resonate with me quite well um there were a couple of you know I, for me you know to get a perfect album you've got to go i want to listen to who thing again and again and again i must have listened to this probably about eight or nine times uh, and then you go there's a couple of tracks i might want to skip but most of them i really really enjoyed and it's only 10 tracks on the album which is always a bonus for me um i think um, i think sometimes these albums you know they go 14 15 tracks it's too long i think anywhere between 10 and 12 i.e. 11 <laughs> um, but any, you know, 10 or 11 12 tracks I think is perfect 10 tracks for me are you just really then go, there's no real fillers in there and I didn't think there was any major fillers in into this album I it, it hit my sweet spot I thought this was a terrific album from Reef I really enjoyed it and I and again you know this is the th- whole thing about why we we, we show the journey the, the, the title of the show being musical people and journeys because we're all discovering new stuff, you know. That we're all and and I, I said I missed all of that. I'd never heard of Reef. I, yeah, I can't remember their hit. So for me, it was new, it was fresh. I'd never really heard them before, and I thoroughly enjoyed this album. I thought it was absolutely terrific. Um, really, kind of hit my sweet spot in in a 
in many, many, many ways. So, um, and a few of their tracks hit the cool soft lift. So, let's crack on then. So, um, um, yeah, what do we think of this, uh, Dave? I'm going to go for the uh, the good old Trish middle of the road and give it a three. <laughs> Simon? Yeah, I'm going to follow suit with the three as well. And Paul? It's a four from me. A four? It's a four and a half from me as well. Um, it's um, yeah, I, I thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed this album. I thought it was absolutely terrific. So anyway, okay, so that puts it on. Let's go through it this time because obviously we're struggling today. Uh, six, <laughs> ten, fourteen and a half, fourteen and a half. Is that right? Seven, ten, yeah, fourteen and a half. So it's not going to get in our hall of fame unless Chris Summers comes up to six, five and a half from somewhere. But certainly going to be well up there. Certainly going to be. Um, I, I know we. I, I know Chris actually quite enjoyed this album. He was pleasantly surprised. I think he's going to give a good score. So um, okay. Um, um, so what? Where, where are we now? Then Nazareth. Um, let's. Uh, well, we're going to start with Paul on this one because this is very much, very much from our generation. Um, and Nazareth were back in the day. They were still were with us in the eighties, Paul. Um, and they're still going. So talk to me, Paul, about Nazareth and. Um, Educate, educate our, our young, young rocker friends here to the power and might of Nazareth. Okay, Nazareth have been a going concern uh, from 1968. <laughs> although, although the roots do go back further to 1961 in the form of the Shadets, uh, a Dunfermline outfit. Yes, back when JF Kennedy was uh, president of the US and even before I was even conceived. Uh, the band have evolved over the years and members have come and gone, most notably the original lead singer Dan McCarthy, who left due to ill health um, in 2013. Only Pete Agnew, the bassist, remains of the founding members. Uh, and he does look odd in the video uh, compared to his, 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 the other one band members. The Rockier... Uh, uh, sorry... Um, yeah, this, this Scottish uh, rocker band have previously, be, previously been renowned for uh, their rock power ballads, uh, such as Love Hurts. Uh, the rock year, uh, Air of the Dog, was also covered by Guns N' Roses. And these two songs are their biggest hits to date. Surviving the Law has no rock ballads. It is hard rock, heavy metal offering from the beginning to the end. It kicks off with the latest uh, single Strange Days and you're taking on a heavy rock tour. At times, Carl's sentence sounds like a Bruce of, of, of Iron Maiden and to who knows who. But at the end of the day, it adds to the generous amount of variety on this album. Credit must be given to Pete as he seems to hold things together with his bass playing. And Jimmy Murison is a really busy guitarist who has given the freedom to generate griff, great riffs and solos throughout. I kind of feel uh, guilty as uh, I've dismissed uh, Nazareth as a power uh, a power ballad rock band from my earlier days. So the Surviving the Law was a breath of fresh air. Uh, the only issue was I wasn't totally convinced with the singer to give this album the top marks it probably deserves. Dave? Yeah, um, definitely uh, a fan of some of uh, Nazareth's uh, old stuff. Um, Hair of the Dog, which Paul mentioned, one of the first riffs I ever learned to play on a guitar. Um, this one is a, an album of two halves for me. Really enjoyed the first half, felt it was going along really nicely, and then the second half, with a couple of exceptions, just tails off really heavily for me. Um, standout for me was uh, Waiting for the World to End, quite ironic, because by the end of the album, I was waiting for the album to end, I've got to be honest. Um, last track is a very poor choice. Um, it's just they put like probably the mellowest track on the album right at the end and for me it would have been better placed in the middle a little bit of a change of pace um, but I mean I can I could see myself going back and listening to it again but I mean I know they've done better stuff than this Simon Old Dad's Rock you love it yeah, no, this is this is a uh, hundred percent what I would refer to as dad rock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't speak for the legacy of the band or anything. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I've never heard of them before. <laughs> um, uh, they they appear to have a great sound, but it is from a from my opinion, it is unfortunately just that sort of dad rock, and nothing on the album particularly gripped me. Um, nothing was offensive. It just 
just didn't really enjoy it. It all seemed to be quite. They seemed to be playing quite safe. That sort of safe rock space. Nothing seemed to particularly change much, apart from the last track. Uh, you made me. Uh, you made me. Which I thought. I actually thought Spotify had shuffled onto something random because the album had finished because it was so different from everything else on there. I genuinely thought I'd like like oh it's done. I'm I'm playing a different band at this point. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't. It just didn't really grip me. It's just not my kind of thing that I enjoy, unfortunately. Paul, um, right. Well, you've already spoken. So, uh, what did I think of it? Um, I, but I, I was speaking to Paul prior to um, you know because we had a quick, quick chat about them, and he, he kind of mentioned what he felt, and I thought, well, I'll go back and listen to it again. You know, maybe maybe I'm missing something because I didn't particularly enjoy the album on the first listen, and and. I just got to come down to the singer. I just didn't like his voice. I did not like his voice in the, the slightest. For me, it was very bland, monotone. Um, I, I agree, Paul. There was some good riffs and some stuff in there, but for me, overall, I just it did. His voice did not grip me. It didn't speak to my musical soul, if you like. Uh, I, it just I just didn't get on with it, um, which is a shame. Um, I, and I think that. Um, I I I I'd heard a little bit of Nazareth in the past. I never really um, kind of, other than some of the hits they've had, I've never really kind of got got into them. And I think that, yeah, for some reason, it just didn't resonate with me. I just, I just and and when I listened to it for the third or fourth time, it, it was definitely his voice that kind of just um, just for me was quite bland. And I didn't, it, I just didn't get it. So um, and it, well, no, it didn't get me. Um, um, if I'm honest with you, so all right. Well, let's find out what uh, what we all thought of Nazareth. Paul Nazareth, uh, three point five. So I thought you were going higher than that, based on that review. But there we go. Simon, and uh, not like you, Nigel. I wasn't convinced with the singer. Okay, yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, but yeah. that's what knocked it down. But the music and and the guitar work and everything, I really did enjoy. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, uh, yes, uh, Dave. Yeah, straight down the middle for me on this one, 2.5. 2.5. Uh, Simon? Uh, I'm going to keep knocking it down a bit more, 2. 2. 2. Um, I'll knock up a little bit more, I'll give it a 2.5. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'd listen to it, don't get me wrong, I would listen to it, but it was a very average album in my I didn't hate it, didn't love it, it was just kind of in the middle. Okay, oh, to date, none of our headline acts have really kind of come to the fro. Will Red Hot Chili Peppers, the legends that is Red Hot Chili Peppers, change that? Will they bring something? Will they finally elevate a lead act to a Hall of the Fame? We've never had it. Would Red Hot Chili Peppers um, do it today? Dave, I feel that maybe Red Hot Chili Peppers might be your cup of tea. Yeah, I do enjoy a bit of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You are right there. Um, I believe this is the first album with uh, John Frusciante back in. Um, and it is a bit of a return to form for the most part. Um, he is a very big part of their sound. And in the albums where he's not been there, it, it definitely sounds like there's something missing. Um, so, you know, it's good to have him back. It definitely sort of shows. And, and it's, this is much more their sort of sound. Um, there's no shocks though, everything you'd expect from a, a Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Unfortunately, that does include their tendency to include a few duff tracks here and there. Uh, highlights for me are Here Ever After and It's Only Natural. It does drag on a little bit towards the end. Um, if they had cut the poorer tracks out, left it, it would have been a much more uh, well-rounded album, I think. But, you know, strong effort throughout. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Simon, talk to me. It's Red Hot Chili Peppers. I mean, this is more your sort of era. Yeah, I mean, um, sort of listening to, by the way, in Californication during my formative years is, you know, it's something I grew up with. I I'm, I love those albums, absolutely. Uh, so right off the bat, I really wanted to enjoy this. I really wanted to enjoy their return. But unfortunately, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I and the hand on heart this hurts me to say but I found this album I found it dull almost tedious I almost found like it was a dirge at times it just I don't know what it is there's just something about it that just didn't didn't grip me at all and it just felt like it dragged on and on um, I, I felt really bad I went back and listened to by the way in Californication and 
I suppose on a technical level, the sound is very similar. Like the style they went for is similar, but there's just like I can't put my finger on it. But there's something about this album and the tracks that just just does not work, and I did not enjoy it at all. Unfortunately, it was really slurred and slow as well in places, and I, there's just something about it that I don't expect to hear this playing on a playing in a bar in Spain or something, and not really like, oh, is that the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Huh. Like, and you know, it, it it just felt like a very nothingness. Unfortunately, I really wanted to enjoy it. I'm so annoyed, but yeah, unfortunately, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, Paul, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree what has already been said. But um, so the, the Chili Peppers have been in a music uh, concern for forty years. In that time, they've they've reached multi platinum heights to really sad lows. A mixed bag of of eleven albums. They've always bucked the norm, betraying the image of dangerous, topless, tattooed, bearing punk heads, but with the intent to make you feel you're personally in a funk, funk rock uh, jamming session with them. If this resonates with you, then you'll be hooked, as no one else does it better. The issue is that you can also be completely zoned out by the more than woolly as songs. Chili's uh, Unlimited Love uh, album is has been pitched as a reunion album, the first in six years, and as Dave has already mentioned, the first with John uh, uh, Frushanti in 16 who originally joined the band in the late 80s as a, a, a music virtuoso and quit uh, on the 1992 tour only to rejoin in 1998 to help drive the band to the most fruit, uh, fruitful period and in, many, and in the years of many, including myself, make them sound more like The Cure. It is also a return to the guitar uh, for John for nearly a decade, and it's very much appreciated on this album. Apart from the 2006 uh, double album, uh, Stadium Acadium, where the riffy pile-driving anthems felt at home alongside hits uh, by fellow uh, Gen X peers, uh, Foo Fighters and Green Day, Chili's usually sound like nothing else on the mainstream radio. In fact, Unlimited Love is now their second biggest selling album to Stadium, uh, Acadium, and might well be the biggest selling rock album of the year. While it can't be argued that the Chili's are still a radical band, Unlimited Love is a return to form to a generation ago. It follows the same insensible formulas as David has has already mentioned. Uh, The album kicks off with a hit single, then falls into what I would call woollier songs about who knows what, how good the music was in the 70s, the traffic in in LA, grief, climate change, about hapes roaming free and what uh, Anthony Cardis aqua mouth dance is waiting for you. That builds up to uh, songs that will probably end up as fan favorites like Veronica. For me, there is a certain comfort in knowing that the Chili's are still around and I enjoyed this album but it just wasn't strong enough to recommend as I must listen to. Yeah, I, I you know, I think I'm going to be um, uh, on the lines of Simon here. It was just, there was a couple of really good tracks on there that kind of would make you pull a cool playlist. And, and, I, and I couldn't, like you, I couldn't put my finger on it. And it's just the lyricism. It's just all a bunch of, Gobbledygook! It just feels like there's words thrown in just for the sake of throwing a word in. It's like it's like a diseased, gone wrong limerick, you know. That just like uh, yeah, I kind of think I go along this way, so I'm just going to throw some words at it and uh, just see if it sticks and uh, people love it. And oh, and and it'll all sound mysterious and like you know. I think um, one of the narrators was a haircut 100 um, hit single, and people were like, "What does it mean about the man sitting under the tree?" Type of thing, and it's just like. Yeah, I don't know. We just got. I remember watching a documentary on it. It's like we we don't know either. Um, and and it just felt like their, their lyricism. They don't really know either. To be honest with you, they go just I just throw some words at it and just see if it sticks. And for me, that just got really, really, really annoying. Um, I, I I don't want to have to. There's always a bit of interpretation to music, of course there is, but I don't really feel I have to sit there and work at it. And there are people out there that love that 
there are I see you know people and hear people who love the fact that they have to work an interpretation of music that they have to work out what it was that they were the 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 um, the band or the um, the writer was trying to get at. Uh, I can't be asked to be honest with you. Uh, entertain me, <laughs> entertain me, make me want to listen to the music again and again and again. Um, you know, speak to me. Um, and and this was highly disappointed as an album. Highly disappointed. Had didn't have ultimate love. He had no love for me whatsoever. However, there were a couple of really good tracks that I really enjoyed. So okay, um, so let's. Um, well, it doesn't sound like a, what you know. Another headline act is gonna 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 sink away and crash and burn into the MGP <laughs> Hall of Fame. Um, well, I guess I do, I, do, I, do, I do some analysis of what actually has been the best of our headline acts. Um, okay, um, so Dave, um, give us your rating, my friend. Yeah, three out of five. Anything more than that would just be a bit over the top, I think. Okay, cool. Uh, Simon? I, uh, I might be throwing in some personal bitter disappointment here, but I'm going to give it a one. Okay, um, and Paul? Yeah, a, th- a three for me. A three for me. Um, unfortunately, I have to give it a two. I don't want to, but I have to because there was a couple of tracks that did make my yeah were really good, um, and and particularly opening title and the hit was, was worth was worth a po- you know those two tracks was worth a point each. <laughs> the rest of it. I can just throw away and put in the bin. So um, from that score, so I, I yeah, got to agree with you though. Uh, anyone who claims they understand his lyrics um, are talking out of their ass. I don't think he understands them. No, no I don't think he does. I think he plays word bingo. <laughs> Pull a word out. Yeah, I'll throw that in. Anyway, yeah, you could be right. You could be right. There are one or two tracks where it kind of makes sense, but yeah, not many. <laughs> um, well, I think I think that. Um, I think Chris probably give it more than one, which basically means he'll hit double figures. Um, and it's unusual because actually this has been a really strong stage. Okay, this has been a really, really, really strong stage. Probably one of our, you know, overall our strongest. We're not what there's not going to be an artist that's got into the single figures ratings to to be in that that avalanche. But currently, without Chris's right, currently our favourite act overall um, has been Lords of the Trident and uh, and the Offering as our current leader, which could highly unlikely could make our hall of uh, hall of fame um and then obviously we have reef um just after that and i think that i think that might end up um once we get chris's votes in so uh, so uh, chris once again sends his apologies and um and uh, but you know he has actually worked really hard in listening to all the albums so um, you know it's only fair that um that we um, we get his ratings from that side of things anyway um i hope you've uh, you've enjoyed the show guys um and it'll be interesting to see then what tomorrow's lot will think of bone driver um because that's obviously done pretty well as well so um i tonight i'm off to watch thunder in concert at, uh, nice. at, uh, at wembley um and i've got some really good support acts as well so i'm really looking to that and we are reviewing thunder's album tomorrow so uh, the new album dopamine so should be looking forward to that so me and the rock chris rock trish <laughs> rock uh, rock chick Tris are going to watch them, so that should be absolutely excellent. Um, so, um, are you guys going to join me next month? Oh yes, oh, definitely. What a lineup we have next month! This month has been good. Next month is it, is, is it potentially even better? Who knows? Um, Simon, thank you very much for joining the show. Glad um, yeah. you know. Good luck um, with your month of, of of exams. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much for joining the show. No problem. Good stuff, and Paul. Thank you very much for all your your brilliant research and uh, insight into the history of some of these bands. Thank you very much for joining the show. Adios, adios, and uh, goodbye to everybody.